that is briefly introduction to Redlands and Palm Springs. I'm Jian Xia Song, product manager for Experience Builder and Web App Builder. With me, hi, I'm Alex. I work on the Solutions Web Development team. Uh, my team contributes tools and widgets to Experience Builder. Let's get started. So first, let's uh, want to share a few user apps. So this is a green print explorer web application built with Experience Builder in ArcGIS Online. So we know Experience Builder comes with online, ArcGIS Enterprise, and the Developer Edition. This one is no coding. So you can many layers, you can turn on the layers here, and you can um, use the bookmark to show different topics based on the layer visibility. You can use the add data widget to add your data on the fly. This app is really uh, showing the information for planners and community leaders to make a decision about their natural and uh, community assets. Now you can use the tools. This is near me to find information. One thousand feet, then feet in this area. Let me see different things. So they show the population characteristics. Land parcels. So there, the number of land parcels in this area near me and the owners and total anchors. You can also explore the map by the right side. There are a lot of widgets there, base map, the drawer, and the elevation profile, for example, I can just draw quickly. Get the elevation profile about this area, or the print widget. Eventually, I can send my feedback in survey one, two, three. All of these are no coding. This uh, marine spatial planning policy is from Ireland government. So let's first look at the home. They show you information about uh, marine spatial planning information in this area. They have three act uh, activities. One activities map, and activities and a policies map. Here, from the activities map, you can turn on different layers to see their activities. We can also use the activities to explore them. For example, environmental. There are four policies associated with it. Biodiversity policy. This one is for bio biodiversity policies. One, two, three, four can see the map as well. Next, the most important part I like the most is the policies map. For most of us, understanding policy is very challenging. So many different policies you know, in the text, it's hard to understand. Now they show their policies in the map. For example, I use this tool to draw a polygon. This Alex machine, so I really don't know how to draw here. Uh, Alex, can you help me draw a job? <laughs> My machine is not working. Okay, see, you see in this area, there's policies associated with this area, right? Um, you can click these policies to get information about the summary of the policies and more information.
So let's get back to the slides. So today, you already see the user apps. We are going to talk about overview and the building blocks of Experience Builder and the deployment using developer edition and the roadmap. So you already see what Experience Builder allows you to do. It is a highly configurable framework for displaying and building web apps. You can explore design decisions with templates that are easily customized, access ready-to-use widgets, and when needed, build custom tools to deliver production-ready solutions faster and with minimal effort. It is data-driven, so you can build map-centric or non-map-centric. Mapper, mapping is not Web map, web scene is not only data source. You can bring other data in as well. Feature layer, scene layer by themselves without maps. It uses the latest web technology so apps look modern and perform better. These are key features of Experience Builder with flexible design. You can design your own blueprint. Mobile optimization allows you to configure apps on the desktop, tablet, and mobile differently using one URL. Which is communication is great because they can communicate with each other and respond accordingly. 2D and 3D data work seamlessly in one app. In, in fact, widgets are blind. They don't care if the feature layer is in the 2D maps or 3D web scene. As long as the feature layer, they will work with it. Experience Builder also integrates with other apps like Survey123, Business Analyst, ArcGIS Indoors with widgets to streamline the workflow. Like Web App Builder, you can create custom widgets and the themes. There is, is a gallery on the product page showing apps built by users like you. You may take a look at those apps, get inspired, and see what's possible. Essentially, Experience Builder is a canvas that you can draw paintings on from scratch or templates. The design capability allows you to create apps that speak the language your audience understands. We said that before, Experience Builder comes with ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise, and a Developer Edition. The developer edition is a separate download installed locally on your machine and allows you to create custom widgets, themes, and actions. The second user example we show from Ireland is built with the developer edition, connecting data in ArcGIS Online. Experience Builder is part of essential apps bundle, like instant apps, dashboard, story maps, and it requires creator or GIS professional user type to create apps. Developers can use ArcGIS developer subscription. Let's take a quick tour with Alex. Thank you, Jinsha. So to open Experience Builder, you'll first want to sign in to your ArcGIS Online or portal organization with privileges to create content. You can open the app launcher next to your profile photo on the top left. 
And when the gallery opens, this is where you can manage existing apps and create new ones. So let's create a new application. And here we can choose from a series of templates that are provided. You can start with a blank page, but I like to use templates as they're a good starter and you can easily modify them. So let's choose the launch pad. When the builder loads, you'll see here at the center, this is the canvas of creativity that Jinsha just mentioned. This is where you can build and interact with your application. So let's create an app for Yosemite National Park to show the trails. So first, let's name our item Yosemite National Park Trails. And let's unlock the layout so I can start making changes to it. I can easily just move elements around. So for example, I'll grab the search here and drag it to the left. I can also remove elements I don't want. So perhaps instead of having my title in a text element here, I'll remove this and I'll leverage the header of the page. Headers are shared between pages. That means less configuration work for me since if I have multiple pages, the same header will just show for each page. I can use a header template as well, and I'll pick one that has a menu, so when I add pages, I'll easily be able to switch between them. Now let's update the title for this app and call it Yosemite National Park. And as a subtitle, I'll type in trails. And here I can easily just reposition this how I want it. And let's add an image here for Yosemite. Now, we also have a map on this page, so let's add some data to it. From the sidebar on the left of the application, this is where you'll find all the building blocks to create it. From the data panel, I can add a variety of data types. I can choose from web maps and web scenes, layers, and even services. So let's pick uh, one web map and one web scene. Now, we've added these to the application. Let's add them to the map widget. The panel on the right is where you can configure your widgets. So under content here, I can select these two maps. And I'll have the web scene as the main active map. At any time, I can just turn on the live view and start using the app to test it out. And you'll see here I can seamlessly switch between my web map and my web scene for a given extent. So let's add some resources for Yosemite to this experience. I happen to have a story map for expeditions in Yosemite, and I'd also like to add the current conditions information for Yosemite, so someone looking at my application can get a quick, glam quick glimpse for their trip. So I'd like to embed these two pages within this one experience builder website. So we'll need to add another page. From the sidebar here, from the page panel, I'll pick this time a blank full screen page. And let's enable the header for it as well. So you can see now I have two pages and it's the same header I just configured. And I could keep adding as many pages as I want here, but we'll just have two for now. And let's rename these to resources and trails. And you'll see that's automatically reflected in my menu here in the top right. So now to add our applications, the story map, and to add the website from the National Park Service within this page, I'll first add a section. So from my widgets panel, I'll find a section widget, simply drag and drop it on the page and I'll make it full size. And now I want to embed external content, so I'll use an embed widget and drag and drop it here as well. And now I can simply add 
the link for my story map to the embed widget. And you'll see it's just automatically loaded within my page here. Now let's go to the page outline and take a look. Under body here, you can see within this page I have my section, there's a view, there's the embed where I put the story map. I'll need another view to be able to add the NPS website. So a section can have multiple views. I'll just duplicate the one I created here, it's quicker. And then when I go to this view, you'll see in the outline I already have my embed widget. All I need to do is switch out the link here for the NPS website. So I now have a section with two views, and I can rename these as well. So let's say this one is information. And my first one was expeditions. Now, two views, I need to be able to switch between them within my page. So let's make some room at the top of the section here. And we'll add the views navigation widget. So now, if I go to my live view, you'll see that really quickly I created a website, a web page with two websites embedded. I can go back to my trails page and just seamlessly switch between all of these. Fairly easy, just took a, a minute, right? So now let's go back to our trails page. And let's configure some more widgets. So widgets can connect to other widgets and consume the data. For example, the map layers here at the bottom and the legend widget are both connected to my map widget and reflect the layers currently shown in the map widget. Let's add an elevation profile widget. So I can simply drag and drop it on top of the map and I'll place it in the bottom right here. And I can connect this widget to the map. I can use this widget to get information from the layers in the map. So I'll enable the option to select layers here. And if I go to the live view, I can just go ahead and select one of these trails and see the profile right away. Widgets can also connect to layers. So we have a table widget that came with the template that I can connect to the trails layer in the map. And now I can see attribute information for these trails. Optionally, I can also change the theme for this template. Going back to the building blocks on the left here, you'll see there's a theme button with some options. Let's switch to a dark theme. You can see all of my elements here turned dark or black. And I can further customize the colors. So instead of blue, I'll change my primary color to green. And then perhaps I could change the theme font here to Georgia. And you can make your elements very large or very small. And any changes you make to the theme will, re will be reflected for all pages. Once I'm happy with this, I can go ahead and save it. And at any time, I can preview it in a browser. Switch between my pages and my views. And once my application is complete, I can publish it and then use the published link to share it with my audience. So now I'll pass it back to Jin Sha. Thanks, Alex. That's a quick introduction of Experience Builder. So. What do you think? Oh, my computer is not working with me today. Number three. Okay, it's three. Thanks, Alex is my saver, no? follow her computer to me and uh, doing things, great. Uh, let's go back to YK. 
cannot see my computer. Oh, <laughs> very relieved. So, <laughs> thank you. This is Mac. So Mac and the Windows, sometimes they don't like each other, so put them in the one room to be a roommate could be a challenge. Okay, like Web Builder, we assembly, uh, assemble building blocks, templates, widget, data, themed together through the Builder interface to create an experience. Very similar like a car, car assembly line. Then you have an assembly line to, to assemble different parts to create cars. So builder interface allow you to do so. Next, we are going to explore these building blocks one by one. Templates. The, the easiest way to get started is to use templates. As part of the product, the default templates have three types, full screen, scoring, and the grid. You may use the full screen templates for apps like Web App Builder, dashboards. The scrolling template is for storing web pages. Grid is for primary dashboards, but you can also build other things with that easy drag and drop. The default templates are categorized in six group, including Web Builder, Classic, Map-centric, Web Page, and Websites. As Republic templates are available under ArcGIS Online, created by the product team, showcasing new capabilities in each release. I will strongly recommend to check them out. Widgets is the center of our product. Widgets are divided by six groups. Map-centric means that widget requires a map to work with, like bookmark. Data-centric widgets can work with or without maps, like table, list, text, image, Button are page elements. Row, column, and the section are layout widgets to help you design the app. I want to emphasize the layout widget because most of us are very familiar with the functional basic widgets. The layout widget is a container for other widgets. It makes widgets align in a row column, grid. You can also overlap widgets using fixed panel. Section contains multiple views on a page as X demoed earlier. A basic widget, we talk about a widget, right? It's six groups, but within six groups, we can group them together as basic widget and a layout widget. A basic widget usually have three properties, content, style, and action. Content defines how the widget works, such as select data from a map or toggle tool options. The style property defines the look and feel of the widget, like size, position, background, border, and even animation. This 2D, 3D face-off animation is one of my favorites. Action defines communication between widgets or what an user can do. Data actions are initiated by the end user by simply clicking a button such as export to CSV or zoom to a selected feature. We want to emphasize the action in the widget property because most of us are very familiar with the content and the style, but action is something uh, we need to configure by ourselves. 
So this data action is opt-in by users. Another option, uh, another uh, action is called message action. Message actions are set by app creators like you in the background. For example, when a feature is selected in a table, map automatically zooms to that feature. This is set by message action. This type of action consists of three parts. A trigger broadcasts a message saying a feature has been selected. Targets listen to the message like a map. So, oh, uh, a feature has been selected in the table that map as a target. Let me do take action, zooms to that feature. So in this case, map is a target, table is a trigger. So uh, let's see Alex demos about action. Okay, so let's take what Jinsha just explained and let's add some actions to the application that we started earlier. So I can define interactions between widgets and their data using message actions. First, I'd like to zoom on the map when I click one of the trails listed in the table here. So I'll go to the table configuration on the right here, and there's an action configuration button here. You'll see message actions and data actions. Let's start with message action. So I'll add a trigger for when a record selection is changed, so when I pick a segment in the table. My target is the map, and I want to zoom to that trail on the map. Now I'll set up one more action here, because I also want that trail segment to automatically be loaded into the elevation profile widget, so that basically it zooms on the map and I get to see the the trail elevation at the same time. So we'll add another action. This time the target is elevation profile, and we want to select a line. So now let's try it out. So I'll go to the live view, open my table widget, and pick a segment here. So that zooms on the web scene. We can see what was selected here, and the segment is loaded into elevation profile at the same time. So easy setup, cool action. So now let's go back here on the right under actions and take a look at data actions. Data actions are enabled, enabled by default. Um, I can turn them off at any time. And I also can customize which actions will be available here. These actions will basically allow my users to process data in the app on demand. So I can use the action button in the table here. And for a selected segment, I could zoom to it, show it on the map, load it into elevation profile, or even export it into different formats. Or I can do this for all the data that is in the table. A newer action that we have is called statistics. And here, for example, I could say really quickly, OK, how many miles of trails do I have in this data set? And I get a sum of 898 here, which is a little small, so I can zoom in. So you can basically use actions to get quick statistics on the data. Now I'll pass it back to Jinsha. Thanks, Alex. Uh, I think data actions can be triggered, uh, tricked. Uh, because when you are web builder users, you never really handle the data action because we handle it in, uh, behind. Um, for instant apps, you don't handle it. So really want to make, uh, make sure you fully understand these actions. Because why, you ask why you have to handle actions. Because Experience Builder allows you to define not just one map as a data source. You can have multiple maps, you have, you could have layers without maps, but how we know you click this table, that map will zoom to that feature. So you need to make a act, uh, message action to specify which widget will take that action. Now let's 
move on to the data source, because I think for developers, data source is an important concept. We imagine it again, you could have map as data source, but you could have other layers as data source. All data in Experience Builder are shared and managed at the app level, and can be used by any widgets. Here are supported data source. We will support raster data source soon. You can also see connections between map, layer, field, and widget in the data tab. When you try to remove data associated with widgets, you will get a warning message. A data source may have four views. Default view inc includes all the features. You may select features view to show a spe species photo, for example. Auto-populated is only available in the list widget and the data view allows you to pre-filter or sort data. Most of you will use this data view to pre-sorting your data. It's very powerful. Some widgets can generate output data like a query and a chart, which can be used as data source in other widgets, for example, you can display the query results in a table. You may use dynamic content to dynamically display values, statistics, and expressions in the text widget, in the list widget. This is one of the popular features. Again, Let's see a demo for both dynamic content and the data view from Alex. Okay, so as Jincha just mentioned, some widgets generate an output data source. So they do some analysis, there's a result, you can use it in other widgets. So this basically allows you to customize the display of those values using other widgets. An example here would be the elevation profile widget. If I select say this trail going up to half dome here, this widget actually generates some, some statistics on its own as well. And there's an output generated at the same time. So if I want to show this information dynamically in a different way, I can use a different widget. So let's add a text widget, for example. And we'll just place it on top of the elevation profile widget here. And now I can connect the text widget to data. Yes, I can type text in the text widget, but I can also use values that come from the outside and show it inside my text. So let's connect it to the output that's generated by elevation profile. And now I can actually just start typing here. So I'll say this trail is and I'll use the dynamic content panel to start inserting values here. I'll add the distance value, long, width, and now I'll insert the elevation gain value and finish my sentence of elevation gain. Now this is really small, so let's make the text a little bigger. Let's center it, and let's add some styling. We'll add a background to it. So you can all see here, it says that this trail is under a mile long and about 190 feet of elevation gain. Now if I go back to my live view here and I keep selecting segments of trails, you'll see that this text updates dynamically to reflect the elevation gain based on the elevation profile. Now I can also use dynamic content to calculate statistics or within uh, expressions. So let's do another example here, and this time we'll make changes to my subtitle at the top, Trails, here. Let's connect it to data as well. And I'll connect this to the Trails layer that is currently in my web scene. Now this time I'd like to use statistics, dynamic content, 
to calculate the total number of trails in this data set. Let me zoom in a little here so you can see better. So I have some options under operator. I can do a count, and I'll count the total number of unique trail names. Insert this. So you can see I have 116 different trails in this data set. Now, I can also do an expression. So perhaps I'd like to know what is the sum of miles of trails in this data set. So I'll pick a sum function, and this time I'll choose the miles field. And I can also format the number so there aren't any decimals. And I can type in miles, and here we go, 898 miles. Now, another concept that's important to understand as well when we come to data sources is data views. There's already two types of data views by default. There is the default data view and selected features. So if I select something, use that selection. You can also create views, um, custom views, that you can customize basically based on filtering or sorting of the data. So let's create a view for our trails data. So I'll go to my data panel here, and in the web scene, I'll find my trails layer, and here I get the option to create a new view. So now I want to create a view to only list the segments of trail that are part of the Half Dome expedition. So I'll type in Half Dome, that'll be the name of my view. And here I'll add a clause, and I will filter for trails that are named Half Dome. So I have five segments here. Now, let's go back to the table widget, and this time I will change what data is being displayed here. If I go to my sheet, I'm connected to the trails layer right now. Let's switch the view to only show the trails for a half dome. So you can see my five segments are now listed here. And if I wanted to, perhaps I could have a different tab here showing um, different expeditions, so segments of trails for each expedition I want to look at. So finally, I'd like to display information about trails as I select them in the table or on the map. To do this, I could use the Feature Info widget, which allows you to display the pop-up for features. So I'll go back to my Insert panel and find the Feature Info widget. Let's place it on the top right here. Now I'll connect this widget to the Trails layer in my web scene, and I'll choose to show only the selected features this time. So now if I go back to my live view, there's gonna be nothing shown in here until I actually select a segment in my table or on the map. And you can see this is the pop-up that was configured for this layer. And now I'll pass it back to Jinsha. Thanks, Alex. So is that powerful for the data view? You can pre-process the data by yourself, not go back to the data creator, right? And then you can decide what to show in your widget. Thin is another building block. It's relatively simple, just the look and feel of your app. They have a set of colors and the fonts for the app with options to change them. So you can change the fonts. Currently, we only support uh, seven fonts, but in the future, we will bring more fonts so that you can create the website, the web page in a way you want with the fonts. Next, we are going to talk about page and the window. You can turn on a page's header and footer. When there are many widgets on the page, it's hard to navigate through the, the page. 
you can use the outline to navigate through them. Outline is like a table of content for widgets. You can also add multiple pages from page templates to create websites. You may use window for splash screen or information. Window has two modes, fixed mode like a splash screen and the anchor mode displays a window around the widget that triggers it. We just add a new capability in the fixed mode. Uh, fixed mode, when you have a block page turned on, you have spread screen, then it opens, nothing underneath of the window can move, right? Then you have to diminish the, diminish the window to see the content on the page. If you turn off that block page option in the latest release of ArcGIS Online uh, Experience Builder, then you have window pops up, but you can still interact with the rest of the page. Uh, like page, you can add multiple windows from window templates. Mobile optimization, this is a big one, right? Besides building blocks, mobile optimization allows you to configure apps on desktop, tablet, and mobile differently using one URL because right now most of us carry mobile. So it is really good opportunity to configure your apps that are running on mobile so you can check it anytime, anywhere. Three keys to the success of mobile optimization. First, auto versus custom mode. If you configure the app on mobile differently from the rest of the devices, use custom, custom. Otherwise, use auto. Second, when you make changes to a widget style like size and position, such changes are local, meaning they only apply to the mobile and they don't affect other screen sizes. Third, when you make changes to a widget content, like selecting a different map or removing a widget, such changes apply to all screen size. Therefore, you should move widgets to the pending list so they are available to other screen size. Alex is going to show how can it be done. Thank you, Alex. Okay, so taking the application that we just built, um, let's optimize it for a small screen. So you'll see on the top here, I have some options, and I can switch to a smaller screen here. So a fairly good layout is provided automatically with this template, but I can make changes to it. You also notice that some widgets have gone missing. Um, the elevation profile widget that I added is no longer there, and so is the feature info and the text widget. And in the header, the title is gone as well. And you can see that the menu is now an icon. So for the widgets that are disappeared from the page, you can find them under the pending list. This means they're hidden for this small screen, but they're still available for my wider desktop screen. This is already set to custom. So I can go ahead and just start making changes to this layout here. So, for example, let's move the elevation profile widget back in. Now, it takes all of this space, so instead of putting it on the page, I'll move it inside that controller here that's at the bottom. And I can move this one all the way down, and I can change the placement of my search and put it back up to the right. And now, just to show that this didn't affect desktop, let's go back to it. So you can see my search here is still on the top left, and elevation profile is still shown on top of the map. So the changes I just made that were just basically positioning didn't affect the other view. They're only for this small screen view. Now, if I want to make any changes to the content of a widget, 
this will be reflected on both views. So if we go to our header here, and I decide to bring in the title again, but instead of Yosemite National Park, I just want to say Yosemite, and I make this change, if I go back to desktop, my title was changed here too, but I don't want that. So instead, I'll undo this change here, and I'll keep the title here, but I will duplicate it. And I will move the original title to pending. Now I'll go to the outline so it's easier to grab, and I can say, okay, this title I will hide, and I can make changes to the new one instead. Yosemite, and update the placement here. So now if I go back to desktop, my original title is still there, and I have a new one for this specific screen. Now if I wanna hide a widget altogether, for example, perhaps I don't want this table widget here, I can use the outline here to find it and move this one to the pending list. Now if I go back to my desktop view, the table is still there, but it's hidden for my mobile view. So let's save this and test it out in a mobile view. I can use my developer tools here and quickly take a look at what my app looks like once I open it on the phone. I went too quickly. Preview. Here we go. So you can see that now widgets open in a collapsible panel. I can switch pages from the menu here, and my views are still available with the two websites I embedded earlier. Now I'll pass it back to Jin Cha. Thanks, Alex. It's good. <laughs> Not that difficult. Three rules, right? Auto versus custom, and the style and the size stay there. And if you want to remove the content, then pending it to a pending list. Three rules, then you can configure mobile easily. I think we are a little bit rushed to the time. Now let's finish it. So when you have you done all the configuration, you want to publish the app. Uh, status of the app in the builder could be draft, published, or unpublished changes. This app status allows you to edit and test updates you made to the app without affecting the live app. You can also easily generate a template from the app as your own starters for reuse or branding. Now let's quickly go over developer edition specifically. There are four key features for developer edition. Widgets are open sourced. All the ready to use widgets are open sourced. You can learn from them or modi modify them to suit your needs. Gmu library is a collection of all the components used by the ready to use widgets you can easily assemble them for your own castle. Experience Builder has its own design system. It's not using Calci design. Uh, you're using Storybooks to play around those UI components. Widgets are plugged in, so you can code it once and use it anywhere. The Gmu library is the framework of Experience Builder extensibility. You will, as a developer, you will play around with Gmu a lot. It has, uh, it's built on four components. Maps SDK for JavaScript, React, Bootstrap, and HTML5. Like Web App Builder, there are two commonly used deployment patterns for Experience Builder custom apps. One is to deploy apps to a web server, and the other is, is to add custom widgets to ArcGIS Enterprise to extend Experience Builder inside Enterprise, so everyone in your organization 
can actually create custom apps with your custom tools. Today, rather than dive into coding, we are going to focus on the collaboration and the deployment capabilities that Developer Edition provides. We'll demonstrate the workflow from importing apps from online or enterprise to Developer Edition, then adding your custom tools. After that, you can download and deploy in the custom apps. So a really great tool for the no coder and the coder collaboration. Back to Alex. Okay, so you can go to the developer website to download the SDK. So if you go to ArcGIS Developers, you'll find an option to download, and here you can find the latest version of the developer edition. If you're offline in an offline environment, you can also download the node cache here. So I've already downloaded and installed the developer edition on my machine, and I'm already also running it. I will basically connect to my ArcGIS Online organization here as an example so that I can access its content. Let me just allow this. Now, I can access the content by like my data and my maps, but I can also import applications that I already created in ArcGIS Online or in my portal. So if I go to my account here, you'll see all the applications I've created. So let's find one app here. For example, I have one for Rocky Mountain National Park. I'll download this. And this basically will import all of the code into my developer files here so that I can make changes to that code if I want to. But I can also use the builder directly and make changes in here with the easy customization UI. If I want to add my own widgets, that's also possible. So for example, here we have a community website where you can find some custom widgets that um, some people in the community contributed. Uh, Robert is a great contributor. He's uh, been contributing to Experience Builder and Web App Builder over the years. You'll find great widgets here. So for example, let's um, look at the measurement widget. Okay, well, when you access the measurement widget community page here, you'll get an option to download the code. Um, once you've downloaded the code, you can go to your file and basically go to your extensions and widgets and simply add the measurement widget code um, to the file here. Oh, here we go. So he provides some details in a zip file. You should just unzip that bring in the files into your developer edition, add it in this folder, and once you deploy your developer edition with the commands, you'll see that um, your widget was added in, your custom widget, and when you go to customize, oops, wrong one, when you go to customize the application that you imported or when you go to build a new application in the developer edition, all your widgets will show up at the end here under custom. So you can see here that measurement widget that I just brought in is available and I can add it to my application. Just go ahead. Thanks, Alex. So it's simple, right? Deployment is not that tricky, just, just the, you have the widgets and then copy paste into your photo folder. That's it. So I want to quickly give you a summarize about the roadmap ahead this year. We, uh, you may already see the new features in the first quarter because we released our experience builder in Access Online uh, last week. So you can take a look, select widget, group filter, app URL parameters, that's very important. Another important thing, we support report capabilities in enterprise. So right now, online doesn't have that capability. You can use the uh, report capability as part of printing services in ArcGIS Enterprise. Then you go to Experience Builder, add your printing services, use the print widget to create your report. 
That report can have image, table, statistics, everything, and a lot of other things you can do. So the second quarter, uh, you see that we continue adding more capabilities for um, experience builder to migrate widgets from web builder to experience builder. We will have standalone major widget, and we will support Rust data source and Google Analytics. Um, the last year, uh, the last thing I really want to mention is at the end of this year, uh, we will have this uh, web builder mode in the fourth quarter. What does that really mean? Basically saying it's a simple build app building experience. For example, right now in Experience Builder, people are saying maybe a really um, design capability is great, but if I don't want to have those design capability, I just want to start with templates, have a few widgets, and they do everything for me. So we will have that Web Builder mode in the fourth quarter of the year. The building experience is really like Web Builder. This will really uh, help our community to translate the transition from Web Builder to Experience Builder. So by the end of the year, our goal is to reach the parity, not just the widgets parity, but also app building experiences. You can learn more at Dev Summit. These are sessions related to Experience Builder and the helpful resources. Thank you. Yeah, we are open for questions. Okay, please. Yes, I think we will have a proceedings for 2024 Dev Summit. In that proceedings, I think you should be able to download the slides. Yeah, no problem. It's like any conference. Yeah, thank you. I know it's a lot of content today, packed in one session. Um. Yes, so my question is when I am working with uh, Experience Builder Developer Edition, and I want to publish the experience that I have developed to the portal. Can I use it as an item in the portal, or it will be just as a website that it is pointing to that element in the portal? Mm, you, you want to use the item, item in the portal is an app? Yes, so I can use uh, author, authorization and administration of users to use this application. Yeah, okay. when, when, when we work on the, dev, on the developer edition. Developer edition, okay. Yes. So you can it will build a website. Yeah. You can import uh, uh, apps from ArcGIS portal to developer edition, no problem. Yes, I import it to developer edition. Mm -hmm. Did my development, and then I want to get it back into the portal. That's a good question. So, okay. The challenge for ArcGIS Enterprise is it cannot upgrade very often because online every three, every year we have three releases, right? Enterprise slow to pick up and your organization has a lot of strict policies for when you can upgrade your portal. But it still wants to have the latest features from the developer edition of Experience Builder. That's very, very challenging, right? You have a developer edition you download, you only can deploy to your web server. You cannot really deploy back to ArcGIS Enterprise, but you want to do so. There are two ways to do so. One is you register your web application as an item in your portal, so people, people can easily find it in your portal, but it's still linked to the web server, not inside Enterprise. This is a, one solution. Another solution, actually is really shared by a partner yesterday. Is a, so basically, they have the same situation. What they do is um, they create a developer edition, the apps hosted in the web server, then they go to ArcGIS Enterprise, that app they want to update. They just use the embed widget to embed the whole developer edition application. So that still the same URL, the same name, but the content is the updated content. However, that's for app only, it's not for the builder. If you want to have a builder, I don't have a solution for that. 
Thank you. Um, custom widgets and the enterprise, not RQS Online, but enterprise. It, does it support bringing in custom widgets yes. right now? Yes, starts at ArcGIS Enterprise 11.0, I think. OK. Yeah. Uh, we're on 10.9, so. Yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Thank you. It's the same pattern as Web App Builder. We are, we are trying to uh, get there. Yeah, because you have to host it in your own web server, those widgets. You cannot bring the widgets to the enterprise because your custom code have to live it's outside. The same way with yeah, it's the same way with Web App Builder. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, pattern. Okay. Yeah. Um, hi. So I have a couple questions. Mm -hmm. So um, at my organization, one of the things that we needed from Experience Builder kind of seemed like it wasn't there yet. So I uh, just want to ask, like, say you have two feature layers in which one has a foreign key that is the primary key in the other one. Is there a way to create a feature where the foreign key will be pre-filled, assuming there's a selection on the other feature layer? So you basically have a related uh, two related feature layer. Yes. The one experience builder support um, support related uh, records. We basically related feature layer similar to related table. Basically, mm -hmm. they related records. Yeah. Um, right now, as you see the uh, the roadmap. In the fourth quarter, we are going to support related records. Right now, in the editing scenario, we can you can edit related records, no problem with mm -hmm. the edit widget. But you want to view or query related records. Yes. That part is not there yet. Okay. But we are going to show. But um, one thing I'm not sure is uh, that view related records very similar to, to Web App Builder. You do the query, you query the feature, uh, all the related records will associate with that feature will show up as well. Um, but if you that's the scenario we support. We will support for sure. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. And is that going to support? Say, like, you know, I created my feature. Now, can you bring me that feature without having to do a manual search, so I can edit the rest of the uh, attributes? Uh, so, edit widget can now can support related records editing. No problem. You should. W what kind of version you are using? Uh, I. I don't know off the top of my head. It's a developer edition. I just know which version. Uh, developer edition, the latest was version. I think the starts um, the June release. I think now it's one thirteen. I think one twelve starts mm -hmm. support related table uh, editing. Okay. Yeah, and you can edit those things, no problem. Okay, uh, and then last question: uh, When I've tried the URL parameter before, you know, it seems like only the table widget picks it up. Is this going to be something that other widgets are going to support? Yes. So we support app URL parameters for map widget and the search widget in the February release of our Experience Builder in Access Online last two weeks. So basically, say the map, right? You have a map. You can center. You can rotate. You can uh, extend mm -hmm. a scale, layer visibility. Already support. Check them out. Developer edition will be out in uh, on March twentieth. Yeah. So you should check them yeah. out. So for the map uh, related URL parameters are there. We and then the search widget, for example, define location search. You have feature search. We we still we still mm -hmm. we also remember those uh, URL parameters. Okay. Yeah, I'm mostly working with non map centric. Mm -hmm. Data, so I was tr used, trying to use it in like widgets like the feature info or the edit widget, and those were like the ones that we noticed were not picking up the parameters, but the table was. Okay, so we support data uh, uh, data selection. Data selection, your parameter, regardless if you have map or not. You basically it's feature layer. The table is a feature layer, so mm -hmm. we 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 can remember which record is selected yeah. in the table. In, in, which record in this, uh, is selected in the table or on the list, and then feature info as well. So go there on the builder part. We have app set new app settings. 
so on, the, on the left, you will see those uh, app setting experience, and then you have managed URL okay. uh, parameter status. There you will see uh, data selection, uh, URL parameter option, then map, then search. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for the theme aspect of, of Experience Builder widgets on, uh, not on Enterprise and not on Developer Edition, is there a way to share those themes across an organization? Very good question. <laughs> yes, it's uh, under our uh, consideration. We call it Theme Builder. Right now, I think about that. You are artists online enterprise, you uh, online or enterprise users. You create apps, uh, ten apps. Then you want to change the look and the feel, uh, branding your organization stuff on every app. What you can do right now, you have to open every app to change it. But if you have a theme builder, you create your own theme, then you apply that theme, that all the ten apps will change automatically. That's a re really. Um, is on the roadmap for 2025. We just don't have time. We, our the development effort is really focused on migration, right? But beyond 2024, we, we will plan. We are plan to do so. Thank you. Um, I think this will be your last question. Here. Uh. Um, 11.2. That supports editing, right? Yeah. Creating ele features. 11.2. Yes. Does it, so, does it honor the uh, attribute rules, you know, yes. the triggers? Yeah. If you create uh, those rules in the form in Map Viewer. So, so, so basically, we add, we, right now, the smartphone perspectives all configured through the Map Viewer form capability. So you open Map Viewer, they have a form, F-O-R-M. From there, you contribute attribute rules. I think X knows it better than me. Is that right? Is that is that similar to a smart editor? In, um, it, Alex is the uh, owner of Smart Editor, so she's the best person okay. to answer. So I know that in the web app, um, it does not support the native triggers that you write using um, Esri functions, right? You can write it, and then you can write Python codes to export those triggers out and move them into a different service, right? And then you can import them to a different service, meaning into SDE. Um,